Hello and welcome back to Alternative Programming, the show where we take topics other than NASCAR and then we talk about them. I'm your host, Jack Awars. The gameplay in the background is more Pac-Man 99. I did say a few weeks ago while I was doing my first playthrough of the of the game live that I would come back to this game and get you good, much better gameplay than what I did on that day. So here you go. Maybe we'll get in a pack of one or two. But some topic for this week, we're doing a franchise retrospective on the Pikmin franchise. Right after we did the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise ret retrospective the week prior. The week prior, where we we uh, talked over that through some Smash Brothers gameplay through from my uh, college tournament. So with Pikmin, uh, it pre so pretty much the way I got into that franchise is, is about the same way I got into Sonic. It started with uh, with Jamie picking out a the the nah, excuse me the game from uh, Blockbuster Video. In this case, it was a new play control Pikmin. We got that game. Uh, I think Jamie played it for a bit first, and then I or actually when I think about it, maybe it been it might have been me. Like, I would play the game first, despite Jamie was the one that had the idea to pick up the game. And I guess um, because uh, Olimar was in uh, Smash Brothers Brawl, that was the one reason why we were enticed to try out Pikmin. What other, re what other reasons? Super Smash Brothers is such a big franchise, and it's a big, uh, with it being a crossover, it helps promote the other franchises, and Pikmin's one of them. And so, um, I think in maybe the first few minutes, I was in for a game that's, that was very special. Because, uh, something with the Pik the Pikmin series just really clicked on me. And then I, I was hooked to uh, and playing Pikmin. Even though, um, the, my first play through the game would be through rental. Uh, from here on out, I made sure that every single second that I had with the game be a rental, it counted. So, I believe my very first ever playthrough in Pikmin, I think uh, I took about at least 28 days just to get to the final trial. And even if I got there, or even with me at that point, I had to use up a lot of Pikmin because I thought it would be a good idea to fight Emperor Bullplex without a single bomb rock. Just throw all your Pikmin on its head and hope for the best. Yeah, it's not the best strategy to do. Just, um,. Overwhelm Emperor Bull Blacks with bomb ba or not bombs, uh, bomb rocks. Which um, uh, I would have definitely done that in the Wii version, but there's one big thing about the Wii version over the GameCube version, the original system that Pikmin released on, is uh, the characteristics of bomb rocks. The GameCube version, you can you can drop down a whole lot more bomb rocks, whereas in the Wii, uh, the Wii version. You, uh, you can only lay down one at a time, and when you whistle Pikmin, they don't drop their bomb rocks. So, that was the big glaring difference between uh, version, the versions in the first Pikmin game. But so, moving on to the second game, uh, I think uh, alongside uh, the announcements of Pikmin for a new player, new play control, uh, there'd be a. Uh, a re-release for Pikmin 2 on the Wii. Everywhere else but North America for the first, I want to say, three years when uh, New Play Control Pikmin came out in 2009. Yeah, for three whole years, North America would ne not see a, a Wii release of uh, Pikmin 2. Why? I don't know, for whatever weird reason it was. And I gotta say, those, th those three years where I wasn't able to get my hands on Pikmin 2 after enjoying the first game so much, and I wanted to play Pikmin 2 just that badly, then that was really, really disappointing. And then in those three years, instead of me playing it, I just decided to watch, I want to say at least five different Let's Plays of uh, Pikmin 2. Yeah, it was, um, I was that obsessive over Pikmin 2 at that time, because I really wanted to play that game. And I think among the YouTubers that have watched uh, Let's Play, it was, um, there's a, this is the first one I'm mentioning. I don't think he's on YouTube anymore. And if he is, and if he is, I haven't found 
maybe his new channel with his new name, but uh, K Man Rules 1331. It's not his username anymore. I don't think you'll be able to find him through the search bar on YouTube. Uh, there's Game Guy Triple Eight. Remember hit, watching his Let's Play of uh, Pikmin 2 vividly. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and then of course, Chuggy Conroy's Let's Play in 2012, 2011, around that time. That was a um, phenomenal Let's Play from him. He did play the uh, the GameCube version because I believe uh, uh, he did the Let's Play maybe a, several months right before it finally got re-released for Wii in 2012. And of course, his. Uh, Infamous run in, in the submerged castle with the water wraith, which uh, that's one thing I want to bring up with the Pikmin 2 is uh, I feel like everybody but myself really puts a lot of emphasis on the submerged castle and how uh, how difficult that cave can be if you're not some um, hundred uh, percent aware of what you need to be doing in that cave, where you need to be working really fast. So that way the uh, the boss for that cave, the water wraith. It doesn't spawn because uh, once you um, set foot in a sub level in the submerged castle, you have about five minutes to either get to the next sub level and or uh, get all the treasures in the area before uh, the water rate shows up. Actually, um, even if you do collect all the the treasures, then that doesn't stop the water rate from spawning. It's um it's after you uh, spend five minutes in one sub level that's when uh, the water rate shows up. Unfortunately, um, I was able to, I think, for all of my run-throughs in Pikmin 2, uh, when I played on the Wii, I never uh, had to spend more than five, five minutes in the uh, submerged castle. So fortunately, uh, with that advantage, I, I very much had a much easier time with the submerged castle than many other players. And then I just um, completed the cave, beat the water wraith, Using the purple Pikmin that they would find, uh, that the game would finally give me, and then got the uh, professional noise maker, which allows me to pluck Pikmin from the ground using the whistle, and then just went on my merry way. And uh, I would then think that instead of the submerged castle, I think um, the three caves from uh, the Wistful Wild, the final area in the game, I think um, any one of those three caves should be nominated for toughest cave in the entire game. The whole of Heroes, uh, most importantly, that was a very uh, challenging cave. It's like an endurance round, really, because um, at least a good chunk of the floors is just one big boss battle. But the forgiving part about that cave is you, they, they do give you some rest areas that include Bulbman and uh, Queen Candy Pop Buds. So in case things go really bad, then you got that to fall back on. Or if you're a skilled player, such as myself, I suppose. No, I shouldn't do my horn, own horn like that. But point is, um, you can go into the... If you if you really uh, feel like you can get through the cave alright, maybe go in less Pikmin and then take advantage of the qu Queen Candy Pop Bud. No, I take that back. You really don't need any, any more Pikmin if you're at the point of Wistful Wild, as you probably already harvest... Uh, you pr probably already harvested a whole bunch of Pikmin at that point. And so, um, I gotta say, um, just like with Pikmin 1, I enjoyed the heck out of Pikmin 2 as soon as I played it. I had to uh, play through the game at least three times uh, in its heyday when it got released for the Wii. Uh, Pikmin 2 is a phenomenal, phenomenal game that uh, I would have been more glad to play a whole lot sooner but some um, better um, better now than never when it comes to uh, me being able to play it take until uh, 2012 for the Wii I think I'll throw in this little detail too well before we rented the game in 2009 for <clears throat> the first game on the Wii I think um, Jamie did uh, try out uh, Pikmin 2 in the GameCube demo kiosk I want to say maybe in 2006, 2005, whenever that point is, where right before, uh, um, right before uh, the GameStop st started taking away the uh, the GameCube demo kiosks, and the last versions of it had 
Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, Star Fox Assault, and then uh, Pikmin 2, of course. You know, those three games in particular that jump out at me. I think um, that might have been my first uh, ever exposure to Pikmin 2. Although, uh, the gameplay that was being used, I was, that memory was still really fuzzy. I don't really think, or don't really remember too much about the the specifics on the Jamie's gameplay session there because I was young. I might have been nine years old, 2006 we're talking. Anyways, uh, so uh, we're talking 2012. No, with Pikmin 2, uh, that game released in 2004. So not counting the re-releases, we wouldn't see an, another Pikmin game for almost nine years. Because uh, in 2013, we would see the release of Pikmin 3. And easily that was a... Uh, a big uh, title that if I were to get a Wii U that was definitely one of those games that was the first game that I had to get unfortunately that wouldn't uh, happen actually instead um, when I got my Wii U in Christmas of 2013 I had to settle for the uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker bundle and then uh, I had Wind Waker as my first Wii U game and so um, Rather than maybe get Pikmin 3 for Christmas or something, I would have to wait until uh, May of 2014 when I would purchase Mario Kart 8 uh, that day, or that day, the last day of May. Or no, it actually might have been uh, my birthday. I used it my birthday money at the time. And uh, and then through the um, this Club Nintendo deal, I would be able to um, get Pikmin 3 for free, pretty much. And then that's my way of being able to play it. Now, honestly, um, I do feel a little dirty about some getting Pikmin 3 for free. As an avid Pikmin fan, I would very much have no problem with um, spending money on um, on spending money on on the Pikmin games. But to get it for free, you know, uh, we'll take it. But anyways, um, Pikmin 3. Uh, what can I say about Pikmin 3? Uh, there's a lot of quality of life additions that were added to this game over, say, the first two games. Uh, deploying all of your Pikmin and having them all in one onion is a very welcome addition. Uh, the waypoint is also a very useful tool. Having uh, your captains go in whichever direction and just go there automatically and you're not having to move them. So. That was um that made for a very useful tool, especially uh, in later parts of the area, and um and the fact that um the game has three captains, you gotta imagine that would be a, a very crucial element to add in as well for the, just for that. And so um I want to say um I kind of miss the caves that were in Pikmin 2, even though um they kind of dragged on a bit because there are so many caves in Pikmin 2 and. That was awfully about uh, caves uh, acted up to about uh, 70 percent of uh, your entire uh, game experience with Pikmin 2, but still, some more cave ex explorations, anything that can stop the uh, the day clock from rolling on, that was uh, something that I really didn't mind too much on. <clears throat> and if it's a way for me to, <clears throat> oh excuse me, I'm losing my voice. If it's a way for me to cram in as much uh, progress in one day that I can do, then so be it. But um, in terms of game balancing, I suppose uh, the change to not have caves that stop uh, the daylight clock uh, might be the smarter way to go. So now I got now the the strategy board. It's changed for Pikmin 3, and it's more uh, like in like in the first game. Which um, I also have to mention, uh, they did bring back a, a sort of pseudo time limit with the uh, with Pikmin 3, or like in the first uh, game, you had 30 days to uh, 30 in-game days to uh, get all the ship parts and beat the game before your life support system runs out. There's a similar thing with that with Pikmin 3. Instead, uh, you have to keep collecting fruits so that way you can uh, feed the captains, and with no fruits. Uh, to feed the captains and it's game over that way too. So that's one thing to manage, but so long as um you're collecting a bunch of fruit and it's pretty easy to collect these, then you'll never find yourself uh, running out of fruit and uh, 
You'll never find yourself running out of fruit and then uh, the game ending. But um, there's going to be a hard difficulty that will be added to Pikmin 3. In the deluxe release on the Nintendo Switch just last year in 2020. Yeah. So um, with, um, with the Pikmin 3 Deluxe, as soon as it got announced in one of the... Was it the Nintendo Direct? No, I think it was a standalone reveal. Just like with Paper Mario the Origami King. So, I immediately saw the trailer and I'm like, okay, we gotta get this because this is not only this is Pikmin, even though this is re-released for Pikmin, we gotta get this because uh, I wanna replay Pikmin 3 again. Uh, I wanna see what the game is like with new controls, not with the gamepad. Because that was one thing that, that really uh, deterred me from playing a whole lot of Pikmin 3 is having to swap between the Wii Remote and Nunchuck controls and then over to the gamepad just so I can do the waypoint and to see that get mapped to maybe a, a few buttons <clears throat> in the Switch version that was a welcome addition and there's plenty of other uh, welcoming additions as well like, uh, like the, uh, the charge feature that works a lot more quickly now you just um... if you use the gyro controls you just point the cursor over there you press X and then the Pikmin charge there immediately. You don't have to do no fancy Z targeting like it's Zelda. So, very welcome, fast uh, addition to to the game. And so we're we're at about uh, 17 minutes or so. There's one more thing I want to add on to all of this. I did actually play the GameCube version of the first game, and it was only because uh, that was the version I settled for after uh, renting uh, the Wii version of the first game uh, amount of times and then I that was my decision I decided to play it on the GameCube just because I was very curious on how uh, the GameCube handled the cursor I thought maybe it might have been maybe dual screen but then uh, I realized not we just mapped to one control stick it's just that some um, you move around normally is all mark if you have a full tilt but if you do the um, like the half tilts, the gradual tilts, then that's how you control the cursor. So that was very interesting. But some um, the downside with the GameCube, if there's one downside with the GameCube version of Pikmin, is that the cursor is very limited compared to the Wii version, where you can throw Pikmin at longer distances. But anyways, the main thing I want to add with Pikmin, so uh, the version I played on, it, I did my playthrough on Pikmin. Yeah, back in 2011, I did it on the GameCube. Uh, I let one of my friends, it was Ian from from uh, North Carolina. I let him borrow the game, and I think his, uh, his dad at the time, I don't know. According to him, uh, he uh, broke the, the disc for that copy of the game. And so now, um, that's why you never saw me play uh, the GameCube version of Pikmin again when uh, I decided to revisit the game for its uh, bonus modes and that's why I strictly went to uh, just viewing the uh, Wii version and never another trace of the GameCube version again just because I, I never got my uh, I essentially didn't didn't get my uh, GameCube version of uh, Pikmin back but it's all good Ian's a good friend still it's just that uh, parents crazy smashing things because smashing things maybe anger issues this parents but anyways that's all I got for this week um, it's gonna be quite a while for me to post another alternative programming but because I'm scheduling this in alignment with my NASCAR fantasy live series as that's going to be on break so will this series and then uh, I want to say around Maybe three or so weeks from now, I'll resume alternative programming. And uh, by then, we're going to be doing a triple feature retrospective franchise uh, with the uh, Animal Crossing, Punch Out, and Duck Hunt. Combined, uh, and I don't have too much history with them, but I'll give you, I'll still give you some okay uh, thoughts, maybe my own opinions about the franchises. So, that's all. That's all I got for this week. Thank you for watching as always. Tune in three weeks from now. I'll catch you all next time. Take care.